Hello everyone, Hyper here, and today's video will be the long-awaited Unholy DK guide for patch 9.0 in the Shadowlands. In this guide, I will cover all the basic information you need to know if you want to step into Mythic Raiding, Heroic Raiding, Mythic Plus, pretty much any content outside of PvP. I will break up this video series into two parts, with the first part covering all the basic information to get you started, and then the second part will come later down the line where we have some more meta things that have developed within the community, such as like what are the best trinket combos um, and little tips such as which talent builds to run on specific boss fights. But in this video, I wanted to go over pretty much talent builds, your stats, general gearing, legendaries, uh, covenant soul binds, and everything that's tied to the covenant system, and a little bit of gameplay. Before we get started with today's video, I wanted to give a big shout out to my top tier patrons, Andrea, Asmod, and Manny for supporting my work, as well as all the other people who support my work on Patreon um, or through Twitch. I really appreciate it a lot. And if you'd like to be part of that community, you can find the link in the description box. If you sign up for my Patreon, you will get some cool perks such as my fantastic UI, which if you check the comment section of any of my videos, I know that a lot of people really want. The first thing I wanted to cover are abilities that we gained moving from BFA into the Shadowlands because there were a few that have a pretty significant impact on how viable Unholy DK is. The first and probably most important one being Anti-Magic Zone. It is a 2 minute cooldown, 10 second duration places a little bubble similar to Disc Priest uh, bubble that gives 20% magic DR to anyone who stands within it. Especially at a coordinated mythic level, this is an absolute game changer for the Death Knight because it means that you can bring some defensive utility on top of your damage and that was something that DK was lacking in the past. Second thing we got as a kind of personal cooldown is Lichborn, 2 minute cooldown and last 10 seconds. It makes you immune to charm, fear and sleep and also increases your leech for 10 seconds. So it's good for breaking out of some of those CCs or you know, pre-immuning them, but it's also pretty decent for popping it right before you're going to do a big burst of damage, especially in Mythic Plus where you're doing a lot more damage on AoE pools. And on some of those AoE pools, you also take a lot of damage. So doing a little bit of self-sustain will always go a long way. Third thing we got is Sacrificial Pack. This is a two minute cooldown cost 20 runic power. You sacrifice your ghoul, dealing shadow damage to eight nearby enemies, and you heal for 25% of your maximum health. So this is meant to be like both a defensive and offensive cooldown. On single target, you will never use this as an offensive cooldown as, as an unholy DK. If you're in trouble and you like don't have a health pot, don't have a health stone, you can pop it to heal. Um, in AoE, it is like a super minor DPS gain to blow up your ghoul after dark transformation, but generally I don't really advise it. Um, just kind of ignore this ability and think of it as a defensive. All right, moving on to the talent section, there's going to be essentially two to three different builds that you can potentially run depending on the content you do and the covenant that you are. For raiding, you will run a pretty default build on most of the bosses. In my next video, I will talk a little bit more about what specific talents I would change up based on the boss fight. The default talent build is all will serve in the first row. You can also take Clawing Shadows, especially once we get more mastery, it might be a tiny bit better, but in general, those two are about equal. In tier two, we take Unholy Blight, which is one of the new talents. Tier three, you can take either one. I generally go with Asphyxiate or Grip of the Dead. Tier four, we take Soul Reaper if we need more single target damage. Tier five, you can either go with Spell Eater or Progression or Wraith Walk on Farm. Then in tier 6 we take Unholy Pact, which is again one of the new talents. And then in tier 7 we take Army of the Damned, which was slightly changed from its BFA version to also summon a Magus that will deal damage to your target. For Mythic Plus, the talents are a little bit more complicated and I might make a Mythic Plus specific video in the future. Uh, but in general, I advise you going with Infected Claws. Then in the second tier you can either take Bursting Swords or Unholy Blight. Um, kind of depends on what covenant you are. For example, with Ventir, Unholy Blight has a little bit more synergy. With Necrolord, you're probably going to want to go with Bursting Swords. Tier 3, doesn't matter, um, either is Fix or Grip of the Dead. Tier 4, I recommend going with Pestilent Postules. Tier 5, either Wraith Walk or Spell Eater. Tier 6, we always go Unholy Pact. 
And then tier 7, again, you can choose between Army of the Damned or Unholy Assault. With Necrolord, the Infected Claws, Bursting Swords, and Unholy Assault synergy is slightly better. And then with Venthyr, where you tend to spam more Epidemics, the Infected Claws, Unholy Blight, Army of the Damned talent build will have a little bit better success just because it has a little bit more single target focus you will deal more damage on bosses and especially once you start getting on higher keys where you will also have to deal with prideful um it can be beneficial to have army of the dead more often next let's talk about the stats for unholy dk in general you will want to prioritize item level on items that have strength over anything else so the only slots that are kind of excluded from this are the rings and the trinkets but on every other piece, item level is better because it has more strength. And strength is the main stat that you should be focusing on. Then after strength, mastery is our best secondary stat by far. Um, so you ideally you want to make sure that you have mastery on every single piece. And then the second stat uh, that you have on every piece kind of doesn't matter. Crit, haste, and versatility all have about equal value. So as long as each of your pieces has mastery, you're good to go. Under this category, I suppose I should also mention enchants. So on your cloak, you will want fortified speed. On your chest, you want eternal stats. On your gloves, you will want eternal strength. On both of your rings, you should have tenet of mastery. And then on your weapon, you should have rune of the fallen crusader. And that's pretty much it for enchants. And this goes for sockets as well. You will just want to put a mastery gem in any sockets that you do have on your gear. When it comes to legendaries, Unholy DK has pretty much two they should be keeping in mind. Um, and these are Deadliest Coil and Frenzied Monstrosity. Deadliest Coil drops from the last boss of the raid and Frenzied Monstrosity drops from Nergash, the world boss. So these two are the main legendaries that you will be swapping between depending on what content you're doing. On most of the boss encounters in the raid, you will want Deadliest Coil because it smoothens out our spec a little bit and it gives us really good priority single target damage. However, once you start adding a few extra targets to the fight, it starts dropping in value. And this is where Frenzied Monstrosity comes in. The Monstrosity Legendary is really strong in Mythic Plus and on any boss fights where you kind of have to prioritize doing cleave damage or um, AoE damage. So make sure that you have those two if you are doing uh, mostly on Holy DK content. Next, let's cover the Covenants. And this is where I'm most hesitant giving advice because the meta just hasn't set in yet. Um, once Heroic Raids are out and Mythic is out and you know a bunch of the top guilds end up killing those bosses, that's where the meta starts setting in and we'll know which Covenant most of the top DKs are picking. But... There is a pretty general rule that you can approach as far as picking your covenant before the raid. If there are any updates to this, uh, I will make sure to pin it in the comment section. So if you're watching this at some point down the line, make sure you check that. Now for raiding, I believe Necrolord is the go-to option. This is because Necrolord has a pretty good soulbind in Ameni. So if you're focused on mythic raiding, I would go with Necrolord. If you're doing heroic raiding, normal raiding, or anything along those lines, then you can pretty much pick whatever you prefer. So within the Necrolord Covenant, um, we have a pretty decent cooldown in Abomination's Limb. The general ability in Fleshcraft is a little bit less useful than some of the other ones, but as long as you're willing to play around the lack of mobility, this is going to be your best bet. So let's talk about the Soulbind Ameni a little bit, because if you're going Necrolord, you should be playing with Ameni. Once you get to like the very end of Renown, you can technically also go Bonesmith Hymir. They're going to be very similar when it comes to throughput. So Ameni's first trait is Lead by Example, which will give you a huge boost of strength whenever you press your Abomination's Limb, and will also give primary stats to nearby allies, which of course doesn't show up on Sims because it's not your damage, um, but that is really good utility that this trait brings. Then... You pretty much just want to go down the left hand side for a mini. Um, you will take a potency slot, then you will take magnificent skin, then a finesse slot. Then you can choose between the two up to you. Um, then you take an endurance slot. And then in the last row, you can kind of pick um, whichever one you want depending on what you need. For example, for Mythic Plus, Gnashing Chompers is actually pretty decent. However, on a lot of the raid encounters, you're not going to be killing enemies to gain the haste benefit. So you're probably better off going with Gristle Toes 
um, where you will get an extra potency conduit. As far as the conduits go, Unholy DK has kind of two that you should be prioritizing. The first and most important one is Eternal Hunger, which will increase the duration of your Dark Transformation and increase your um, minion's damage by a certain percent depending on the conduit rank that you have. This is going to be best overall in Raiding and in Mythic Plus, so if you're only picking up one potency slot on your Soulbind, definitely go with Eternal Hunger. Now the second one that's pretty decent is Convocation of the Dead. Um, this will reduce your Apocalypse cooldown whenever you burst some wounds. Um, obviously in AoE and if you play on Holy Assault, you will get a little bit more value out of this versus playing Army of the Damned, but in general it's still pretty decent on single target. However, keep in mind that it's not going to get you anywhere near as much DPS as Eternal Hunger, so if you have a high item level Embrace Death Conduit, for example, it might be a better bet for single target. The last thing I want to mention within these systems is the Finesse Conduits. You pretty much always want to take Spirit Drain because it just gives you extra Runic Power when you interrupt. And then for Endurance, in Mythic Raiding, you will always want to take the AMZ Conduit. And then if you're looking for some more like personal survivability, then you can take Hardened Bones, which turns your Lichborn into a stronger defensive cooldown. The alternative to picking Necrolord, in my opinion, is Venthyr. So Venthyr has pretty good benefits in Mythic Plus and AoE fights, uh, but on pure single target, it falls a slight bit behind Necrolord. This is the reason that I went Necrolord instead of Venthyr. So on Venthyr, we have the Swarming Mist ability, which again is fantastic in AoE because it allows you to just spam Epidemics um, without having to actually generate Runic Power manually. And it also brings Door of Shadows, which is fantastic mobility for DK. Within the Venthyr Covenant, our best Soulbind will be Nadja. Um, for Nadja, in the first row, you will take Thrill Seeker, which is essentially just a stat boost every so often. Then you will go down the left hand side, take a potency conduit, and this is the only potency conduit you get um, on Nadja, so make sure that you slot Eternal Hunger here. Then we take Agent of Chaos into a finesse conduit, then Friends in Low Places, this one doesn't really matter, and then we go into an Endurance conduit, a second Endurance conduit down the middle, and lastly we take Exacting Preparations, which is fantastic for a DK because it does affect our Rune Forges. Um, and Rune Forges are obviously much stronger weapon enchants than your typical weapon enchants that every other class gets. So getting um, increased effect on our Rune Forges is very strong. In this last segment, let's talk about the rotation um, and the opener. So the opener is going to be fairly straightforward and it's going to be very easy to do if you're playing the Army of the Damned Talent. So pretty much you want to press a Festering Strike when you get to your target, then Army of the Dead, Unholy Blight, Abominations Limb, Dark Transformation, another Festering Strike, then you can Apocalypse. And that's pretty much it. From there you just want to build your wounds with Festering Strike, spend them with Scourge Strike, and make sure that you spend any Sudden Doom procs on your Death Coil. Um, or if you're capping on Runic Power, make sure to spend that Runic Power on Death Coils. But that's pretty much it. Alright, so let's show you this rotation in action. Once again, we run in, we Fester Strike, Army, Unholy Blight, Abominations, Limb, Dark Transformation, Fester Strike, Apocalypse, and then from here you pretty much just want to make sure that you don't cap your resources. Um, so as you can see at the beginning, especially during Bloodlust, you're going to have a lot of resources that you're getting, so just make sure that you try to prioritize your Runic Power, then your Runes, um, have at least three runes on cooldown, and then whenever you get procs with Sudden Doom, just spend them on Death Coil. And then in AoE, you would just swap out Death Coil for Epidemic. So you will notice that my Virion Plague is falling off. You don't want to refresh it manually by pressing Outbreak. If you have Unholy Blight Talented, you will never press Outbreak. Um, almost never. My Unholy Blight is coming back up, we press it again. And then my Dark Transformation is coming up. We press that and that's pretty much how the rotation goes. Now make sure that whenever your target is getting to that 35% health threshold then you press your Soul Reaper on cooldown. That's going to be very important to do because in Execute Soul Reaper will be a major part of your damage and also keep in mind that that means allocating a few more runes in your rotation towards 
an extra spell essentially so you will have less available runes to build and spend wounds on your target instead a lot of those runes will go towards casting soul reaper and then on aoe just incorporate death and decay into your rotation make sure you build a few wounds on each of your targets drop your death and decay and then start spamming scourge strikes and using your runic power on epidemics there's a little bit more in-depth nuance to that but i will have to cover that in a separate video thank you so much for watching this video and i really hope the information in this video helped you get started with unholy dk the last few things that i wanted to mention if you'd like to get my ui make sure to check out my patreon or my twitch both of those are ways to get my profiles my add-ons and all of that good stuff also if you want to follow my twitch channel where i will be streaming every single day once mythic raid comes out since we are participating in the race to world first you can find some live unholy dk gameplay there again thanks for watching i'll see you on the next one bye bye